please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome back. President Trump's campaign digital director revealing a key part of the candidate's social media strategy during the 2016 election in an interview with 60 Minutes. Julia Borson joins us with those details. Julia. Facebook is how Donald Trump won the election. That's what the president's digital campaign director, Brad Parscale, said on 60 Minutes last night. He described how he used Facebook ads to target pockets of voters with tailored messages. And he said he handpicked Facebook employees who supported Trump. We had our, their staff embedded inside our offices. What? Yeah, Facebook employees would show up for work every day in our offices. Whoa, wait a minute. Facebook employees showed up at the Trump headquarters? Google employees and Twitter employees. Facebook refuting Parscale's comments, saying it offered identicals to support and tools to both the Trump and the Clinton campaigns, saying, quote, the campaigns did not get to handpick the people who worked with them from Facebook, and no one from Facebook was assigned full-time to the Trump campaign or full-time to the Clinton campaign. Both campaigns approach things differently and use different amounts of support. Now, this comes as the Washington Post reports that Google has uncovered evidence that Russian agents spent tens of thousands of dollars on ads to spread disinformation across Google's many products, including YouTube, Google Search, and Gmail. Now, with all these revelations, Senators Amy Klobuchar and Mark War Warner plan to introduce legislation later this month required, requiring greater disclosure about political ads. Kelly, back over to you. All right. Keep an eye out for that, Julia. Thank you. Broader question, is Facebook positioning itself as a business or as a full-fledged media company? And should it be held to certain standards? Joining us now is Alan Murray, editor from Fortune, and Joe Yakwell, CEO of Agency Within, an in-house digital marketing agency. Um, guys, thank you both for being here. And Alan, I feel like you can kind of represent the old world, you know, newspapers. <laughs> Magazine. Wait, what's the old yeah. world stuff, Kelly? Me media. <laughs> well, I, I, I kind of feel like I do too in a weird way. But anyway, um, is there, when I hear these stories about Facebook, I keep thinking to myself, is it a media company or is it a business? And to I, I, me, it's I don't a huge distinction, think, but what do you think? I don't think it's a serious question. Look, I was running the Pew Research Center four years ago when we put out the report showing that more than half of the people in the country get news off of Facebook. Uh, that was four years ago. If you're the source of news for more than half of the country, how can you possibly say you're not a media company? Now, I know why they say that. They want to say they're a platform. Don't hold us responsible for the way people use us. I mean, can you imagine the New York Times or the Washington Post saying that? We're just a platform. Don't hold us responsible right. for the stuff that's in our pages. They have to take, and they're starting to make some moves in that direction. They have to take responsibility for the fact that they are a primary way that people get their news today. So, Joe, the reason why this is so interesting is that if you think of Facebook, and to me the reaction to the story suggests that most people do, if you think of Facebook as an impartial media company, then you're horrified at the idea they would have people in these campaigns. If you think of them as a business that wants advertising, it's much less surprising, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, you know, when you think about Facebook as a platform, you really have to think about how people serve ads there and how they consume the content. You know, even how Alan's explaining about these different, you know, more traditional news broadcasters, they all have digital platforms where people are buying and ad buying ads all day long that are not subject to FCC guidelines um, through ad exchanges that populate on their websites. Um, all the same kinds of targeting capabilities that are available on Facebook are also available to buy across the web on almost every publisher domain that you see, including those of Time Inc. and, and many others. Um, right. So, you know, to, to ask for things that should be regulated on Facebook as it relates to, to serving ads and, and how people consume content um, really need to be thought of more holistically as it yeah. relates to the entire Internet. Alan? Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree. I actually don't think the fact that Facebook had people in the Trump campaign helping them put out messages is that big a deal, so long as those messages were clearly marked and included accurate information. But, Alan, would, but the Russian would information your... is a completely different thing. The, the accuracy of the information going out across their platforms is their responsibility. They can't escape Look, that. So, Alan, for you guys, would you ever embed somebody in a Democratic or Republican campaign to help show them, look, here's how you can use our resources? Well, remember, this, is, this was advertising services. They were saying, they said, we'll do it for Democrats, we'll do it for Republicans. They do it for us, frankly. They come in and put people at, at, at time. Facebook to, does. But I'm yeah, saying, what other media companies? Yeah, to help us use their... 
No, of course not. Would other media That's, companies No, you're right. No, why, because, why not? Well, because it would compromise your independence. You wouldn't work that closely with a political campaign ever. Yeah, but let's and talk Joe, about this word embed. I mean, I, I think this word embed is, is taken a little bit too far in terms of what's actually happening here. I mean, we have people from Google, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and many others who will come to our agency's office. We'll go to theirs. Um, our clients will come with us or they'll come to our clients. Uh, and at the end of the day, we're, we're doing this in order to better utilize the platforms, better utilize the technology so that we can do better marketing for our clients. And, and that's really what it's all about. And I think, you know, if you were a political campaign going to a publisher, whether it was, you know, Allen's or many others, and ask them for advice on how to better utilize their platforms to serve better ads or get better targeting or to get better performance out of it, I'm sure they would all be more than willing to give a helping hand. And whether that's in person or not, I don't you know, think is really relevant yeah. here. I mean, Kelly, this is this is going to irritate a lot of Democrats, understandably, but I don't think this is the real problem Facebook faces. The real problem Facebook faces is the Russian information. It's one thing to do this for a political candidate in the United States. It's another thing for your platform to be used to spread disinformation by foreign agents. Yeah, let me I just think ask when, you one last thing. We got, we got to go. But, Alan, let me just ask you one last thing. What if Facebook is the newsstand? And what if on that newsstand they have all sorts of legitimate papers and they have all sorts of trashy, glossy magazines and they carry foreign language newspapers with a different point of view than American ones? Well, I think it's a little different than that. I mean, because they're not just the newsstand. They're determining what gets to you. Their, their yeah. algorithms are determining your news feed. They are the front page. They're determining what goes on your front page. And I think that uh, requires a higher level of responsibility on their part. All right, guys, great conversation. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Alan Murray and Joe Yakwell. We have a news alert now to get to on AIG. Morgan Brennan has those details. Morgan? Hey, Kelly, that's right. So add AIG to the growing list of insurers putting out preliminary estimates of third quarter catastrophe losses. AIG saying that for the third quarter, this is net of reinsurance, uh, that the losses estimated right now will be $2.9 to $3.1 billion. That's pre-tax. That amount includes estimated losses of $1.1 to uh, $1.2 billion for Hurricane Harvey, $1 to $1.1 billion for Hurricane Irma, and $600 to $700 million from Hurricane Maria, plus an approximately $150 million in additional cat losses, including those earthquakes in Mexico. Now, the company also saying that this preliminary estimate involves the, uh, quote, exercise of considerable judgment that these numbers could change given the complexity of the situation. Uh, so AIG coming out with their cat loss estimates. Back over to you. Morgan, thank you. Uh, those hits taking a bite out of earnings for the quarter, too. Uh, for the whole S&P 500. Anyhow, China and South Korea already taking a hard line against initial coin offerings. Now, a major hedge fund manager is taking their side and has a word of warning for investors. We're going to have that right after this.